I don't want to sing the latest song. I don't want to percolate the crowd. I just want to make you smile. I don't care who thinks I'm right or wrong. I don't care who tries to calm me down. I just want to praise you now. You covered me in the midst of it all. You loved me. You gave me another chance. You saw my needs. Others saw my faults. You forgave me. I don't have to listen for my name. They don't have to walk me down the aisle. I just wanna make you proud. Should I make the Hall of Fame or they save a special seat? I just hope that you'll be pleased. You covered me in the midst of it all. You loved me, gave me another chance. You rescued me. I was going to fall, going to fall. You saved me. So in my life, in my life be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Yeah. the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say, you get the glory, you get the praise, take all of the honor, I just want to say, I want you to get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say, you get the glory. Father, you get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say.
myself and forget I muted myself. You know, God be the glory. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hey, <clears throat> no, I was muted, Brother James. I was all the way muted. Amen. Because it depends on what I'm doing. Amen. Good morning. Good morning again to you guys. Amen. I was sitting here talking to the folks over here on Instagram and forgot about y'all over here on Facebook. But what a marvelous God. What a God that we serve. Amen. What a beautiful song. What a great song. You covered me, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for covering us, for keeping us. We all know, right, Sister Jada? We talked about this yesterday. God, if people just don't understand, you get the glory after all I've been through. You took me through the storm. Oh, God. That's why I, oh, you hear me say all the time, how can you brag? How can you boast when you know it was nothing but God who got you through what he got you through? Oh, I could praise God this morning for that. I mean, honestly, honestly, when we say I don't look like what I've, I've been through, amen, it's because it's because I don't, I don't, I don't, amen. God is so good. If y'all don't mind, y'all can just put your hands together wherever you are. If you drive and don't take your hands off that steering wheel, that's just blink, amen, and praise God because he's worthy. What's the best way to start your morning, amen? Not just with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, but it's praising God because I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. Some people woke up. They, they went to bed last night with plans to get up this morning. All right, God, God has other plans for them, amen? But I am here right now, and I want to give God praise and honor. You covered me. You took me through. It's not about making a Hall of Fame. It's not about the applause of man. It's not about those things. But God, because because of your grace, God, you get the glory. That's why it was like a season, and, this, and it stays with me. Your grace and your glory. Your grace. <laughs> Your grace and your glory, Jesus. It's only your grace that took me through this thing. You get the glory. You covered me. Oh, God. See, the thing about it, especially those who are laboring in the, the, the vineyard, those who are laboring in ministry, those who are constantly, it's, it's not a part-time thing for you. It's it's, a, it's 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 very, you know, different. And I want to say before we go any further, thank you, uh, Cousin Pam. I want us to pray for our sister, Mary Smith Griffin. So our sister, Mary Smith Griffin, lost her father on yesterday. She lost her dad on yesterday, and we want to we want to pray for her. We'll make sure we pray for her and her family. Amen. Amen. And that's why we don't take anything for granted. Because I remember not too long ago when she got she got the bus. Remember the bus, and her dad was on it, and it just warmed my heart so much. And you never know. So let us. Uh, oh God, thank you, God. I thank you, God. In spite of what you got in front of you this day, right? In spite of what you know, you got maybe some challenges going on this day. But we're gonna praise God. We're gonna give God honor. We're going to give him what's due him because in your that is where your strength comes from. Your strength comes in your praise. Amen. And and some people's like, well, you know, you got you just emotional, you're just charismatic, and you guys just emotional and you and your expression of, of praising God. But praising God is not always cutting a step. It's not always cutting a step, amen. But it's it's, it's really about, let me see if this comes up right. It's really about you honestly, honestly being able to find strength in it because by you praising God as you go through what you go through, amen, it lets you know that I have faith in God. I don't feel like praising you. I don't feel like lifting my hand. I don't feel like opening my mouth, shouting hallelujah. You know, leave me alone. No, don't leave me alone. Amen. It, it, he said he inhabits the praises of his people. If you want to provoke and invoke uh, the presence of God, the strength of God, for in his presence, there is strength. In his presence, there he will get the glory. So that's why sometimes you just got to lift your hand and just praise God and give God what's due him. It's letting the devil know, yeah, you may be riding my back. You may have your foot in my neck, but you just let me slip a hand in the air. Amen. My praise ain't got to be loud. Sometimes I just shabak. I just rock back and forth. But I give God praise this morning. If you don't mind, wherever you are, you know, you can hum your praise. Amen. Because I know sometimes we may be in a situation, but look around you. Just look around you. Oh, God, what could have been? What should have been? But God, he covered me. He kept me. Listen, let me tell you, he kept you in spite of you. He kept you in spite of you, because sometimes I am my greatest enemy, and because we have not dealt with the things we need to deal with inwardly, amen, amen, I keep making the same choices, decisions, I've allowed fear to override me, I've made, I allowed fear to get me in these situations, and before you know it, you looked up, you have been consumed, but even in your, what seemed to be your consumption, your demise, your finish, God said, this is not it. He said, oh God, I still got work. What I, what I say to you guys on Sunday, and what I say on Sunday, almost but not quite. Just type that in there. Say almost, but not quite. 
Your almost is different than anybody else almost, right? I was almost gave up. I almost, oh God, hallelujah. I almost was consumed. I almost failed. Listen, some of y'all almost went to jail. And listen, some of y'all did go to jail. Sometimes you ended up in a situation that was embarrassing. Almost, but not quite. What the enemy meant for evil, Sister Tiffany, God took that thing and worked it out for your good. Don't come out. Don't come out. Amen. The same way you went in. Don't come out the same way you went in. You got to get the lesson out of what took place. We talked about that uh, a couple of Sundays ago. We didn't get to preach this Sunday. We didn't get to preach this Sunday. We're going to talk about how the book of Chronicles was about the lessons that Israel was supposed to get. Kings and Samuel was a recount of the event that took place. You know, we can always go back and say what happened, what didn't happen, what should have happened, X, Y, and Z, right? But did you get the lesson? Did you go back and check the box and say, okay, when, when that, that happened, what was the lesson God was trying to show me in that? That's what's important. That's really what's important. What's the lesson? Because I don't want to repeat the class. I don't want to repeat the class. And Sister Karen, the reason we repeat the class is because we did not retain the information. Amen. We forgot about what God had done for you. How you right now, some of y'all are struggling struggling. Oh God, I don't know what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. Amen. But I want you to, I want you to really, really make sure that you do that. Also, our sister Tracy Lesane. you may see her on here, Tracy Lesane. Uh, I believe she lives in PA right now. She lost her mom on last week. She lost her mama last week. Her mom was a, she was a strong, strong woman. She had some health challenges over the last few years. Good morning, sister Foxworth. How are you doing? How's everything? Uh, She's had some challenges over the last few years, and I mean, I mean, it's quite a few years now. I believe she might have had a stroke or something like that, but it was a lot of other challenges in between, and you know, her and her family was trying to keep things together. But, but God, but God, Amen. Almost, but not quite. I almost gave up. I almost threw in a towel. I almost turned my back on God, but God never turned His back on me. And I thank God for that. I thank God that even when I was being hard-headed and difficult, when I did not understand and I allowed my pride to get in the way. I allowed my pride to get in the way because that's what we did. Some of us let our pride get in the way. We allowed our pride to drive us. Amen. We allowed our faith, our flesh to drive us and lead us instead of our faith leading us. Amen. So that's a good, even as much as we praise God, we need to do some repenting. And repenting is not a bad thing. Let me tell you something. I thank God for repenting. Amen. You better thank God for repenting. You know why? You know why? You know, when you repent, it's not to be embarrassed. What it is, I have a God conscious. I have a God conscious and that's what you want. A God conscious. When you realize that I am sensitive, stop looking at, you know, the way you feel like, oh my God, I can't believe, you know, God, I, I failed. You didn't fail. When you recognize, when you recognize who you really are, <laughs> This is the rock point where we recognize I'm a mess on top of a mess. But God, you love me in spite of me. You love me in spite of what I did not do. We have all made mistakes. And sometimes in that moment, we don't recognize the mistakes we have made, right? We sometimes later as we mature, we grow in the things of God. Amen. Let's make sure that we uh, see who this is. Yeah, we, uh, Terry, this is not the place where we have somebody reach out to you. Amen. To, to come on and we can see what we can do for you. Amen. But we want to make sure things are up on up and, and up and up. Up and up. Let's be honest, right? We gotta make sure things are up and up, right? Amen. So we gotta vet you. That's not we trying to judge you, but we want to make sure that whatever we do with the money and the treasures that bring into the kingdom, that we are good stewards of that. That means the distribution of it are going to those who sincerely need them. Amen. But we'll take care of that offline. Amen. But we want to just give God praise and honor this morning for another day that he's allowed to see on this Tuesday, March 15th, March 15th. Amen. Uh, it, God has just been good. But almost when I think about what God has brought me, Sister Hoffman is so good to see you. Oh, God is so good. God is so, so good. But this morning, this morning, we want to talk about, as we continue in our lesson about blind spots, and we left off on leadership, on leadership. And this is what I don't want us to do, because I, I believe that all of you are leaders in some shape or form, right? Again, I believe that if you are Holy Ghost filled, you are a believer, you are a leader. You are a leader. So leaders are not those who stand in the pulpit alone, those who uh, do the announcements. Those are not the only leaders that we have. We have leaders in different forms and fashion. Amen. You're supposed to be leading wherever you are. You, there, there's no excuse. I'm using the wrong mouth. There's no excuse 
There's no excuse for us not to lead. You lead because you're supposed to be an example. Again, our theme for this year is that we are witnesses. We are witnesses of the Lord. He said, after the Holy Ghost, after the Holy Ghost, you shall have power to do what? To be witness. After the Holy Ghost, after you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, after the, after the Holy Ghost, it didn't say you have the power to just shout. Amen. But it said you have the power to witness. How do I get power to witness? And why do I need power to witness? I need power to witness because there's no way I could go through what I go through and be here today. Now I'm witnessing God's power in that. And when I see God's power, Pastor Smith, that's when I have the strength. That's why I have a witness. That's why I can stand up in the middle of a crowd when they have watched you publicly be humiliated. They have watched you go down. They watch you go through. And we talked about in um, Bible class a couple of weeks ago as we were talking about journeying through to, to the wall. That wall where you get a certain place. You know how people say, man, I hit a wall. I hit a wall. And the world uses that differently. They said, I, I want you to hear what I'm saying. I want you to hear what I'm saying. It's that you hit a wall, which means I can't go no further. I hit a wall where it's like, that's it for me. They talk about it in sports where a rookie may play because he's used to playing fewer games and at a lesser level. And then after a while, certain games within the season, he hit a wall because his endurance his perseverance has run out. It has run out. And that happens to us believers. I don't care how much faith you have. I don't care what your title is, how many collars you wear, how many Bibles you own. It does not matter. It's really about recognize I hit a wall. I have gone as far as I can go. We talk about going from glory to glory. Amen. This old glory, listen, this old glory may not work in this new situation. That This glory may not work in it. It will help me to sustain and that's really what it's about. When you go through and you know what God has done for you, it helps you to sustain. But it may not be the thing because I need new strength. Tell somebody, I need new strength in this season. I need new strength in this season. Old things has passed away. That may not work. That's why we have to be, we have, Sister Karen, we got to be, we got to be careful with, with just holding on to certain things. You know, you should have another testimony. Every day you should have a testimony. Every week, if you still tell the same testimony from 1975, Come on, God hasn't done anything for you since then? Or did you put God on pause? Some of us suffer from arrested development in our spirituality. Arrested development, which means I've stopped growing. I got, my growth has been stunted, right? It's been stunted at a certain point in my life. And this is used in psychology, it's used in life where people get stuck. You get stuck. Some of you are still grieving from, from 15, 20 years ago. Now, I never tell anybody how to process grieving, but the fact that you're stuck there, you stuck at the wall. So when we talk about this wall, and this is why the lesson today, blind spots in leadership is really, really important. And 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 when I talk about it, uh, Sister Foxworth, you know, I uh, believe it's in Matthew. Let me get my scripture for this. In Matthew, it talks about where is my scripture? Yeah, Matthew 15 and 14. That's Matthew 15 and 14. Amen. We talk about blind spots by leadership and we touched on it a little bit. Amen. We touch on when a leader has a narrow perspective. That's part of a blind spot. And that blind spot is with, uh, does not allow you to see certain parts of where you're traveling and where you're going. Amen. And we all have them. Listen, as, as a pastor, I have, I have blind spots. And sometimes our pastor, uh, Minister Yolanda, could just be our personality. Is, is, is how we process stuff because we all listen. This is, the, I want y'all to, this is very simple. We all are human. And I don't mean that as an excuse to sin. That's not what we're talking about that. We know, we know that part of it. We, are, we all have limitations. Your pastor, your bishop, your apostle, whatever you want to call it, is not perfect. It does not mean as they go, they perfect it. Now they should get healing as they go. Oh God. They should get healing as they went, right? They've got healing as they went, Sister Sister uh, Tashima. They should got they should got healing as they went. The problem is we're not getting healed as we go. We just going without healing. So as you grow, if you're going and you're not getting healing, that means you're leaking and you're bleeding. Amen. And, and that means that also you're gonna be stuck. So the first we talk about is a narrow perspective. And again, we use the example of a hammer. You know, if you're a pastor and you know, <laughs> you're a pastor and, and all you have is a hammer, we, they tend to see every problem, every problem as a nail. Every problem is not a nail. I can't take a screw, right? A screw is not designed to be hammered or be nailed, right? It's designed to be screwed in, right? When you take a hammer, one of the goals even of a carpenter, they, they got this thing where you hit it right, boom, 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 it's in. 
It's in, right? You can't treat every situation as though it's a nail. Some is a screw, right? It's a screw, so it takes time. You got to turn. You got to turn. Now, thank God, you know, you, you, we've been blessed to get drills, right? These high power drills that allow you to speed that process. Zzz, it's in. But there are cases, there are cases, even when it comes to that. And it's about having a narrow perspective and it's causing blind spots, right? Where, where, where I may be putting up a curtain rod where it's a thinner piece of wood is not as strong as a regular piece of wood or if I'm not uh, going to concrete because again, depends on the, the material, right? If I'm going into concrete, I got to get a drill that, that's good for concrete. If I'm going into wood, I got to use a drill to go into wood and it depends on the strength of that wood and what I'm trying to accomplish. So if a leader only know one way of handling situations, that's a blind spot in his life. And what happens with blind spots and even with a blind person, they need help. Tell somebody, I need help. I need help. I need help. And a person that's blind usually have either a cane that allows them. And I have a whole demonstration on leadership when it comes to a shepherd staff. And I actually purchased this. I actually purchased this. A shepherd, there's some leaders that should have a shepherd staff, right? That long stick with a hook on it. And you know it's designated for bishop, but a shepherd carries carries that staff, right? But then I want to show the same demonstration. Is that staff a staff or is it a, a, a cane? Is it, is, it, is it cane for the blind? You know, it's just red and white and they use it to be sensitive to, to certain things. Sometimes if you got, if you can't see well, you need glasses, right? To correct your vision, to correct your vision, right? Um, sometimes you need readers, right? I need help. I need help. You, you know, the older you get, right? The older you get, sometimes these eyes, <laughs> the light is not as strong as it used to be. So you're trying to read some special prescription bottles, right? You look at the prescription bottle, you don't like this. You can't see because it's little letters. And, and is that ironic? It's the small letters you can't see and you're trying to adjust your vision. And what you need, you need readers. Stop walking around. Uh, Sister Fox, I remember, and it ain't even funny, and Christy gonna get me for this. When people, I wore glasses for a long time. A long time, I still wear glasses, but these are more readers. I had glass, I could not see. I couldn't, I mean, and my vision was bad. And people that do wear glasses, that don't wear their glasses, they do this thing. Where they pull their eyes, and y'all gonna laugh, they pull their eyes to try to adjust their vision. And I remember seeing Christy do that. And I didn't know she wore glasses at the time. I said, you wear glasses? She said, how you know? I saw you take and do this. You try, and that's what happened. You squinting. And, and, and that's what we do when we got blind spots. <laughs> you sitting up there squinting, trying to see. Like, I, I can't. Look like y'all, some of y'all don't even know this guy. Look like Mr. Magoo. You can't see. And the worse your vision are, the thicker your lens, the thicker your lens. And that's why I hated glasses. That's why I wore contacts. My eyes were so bad. Those lens were so thick. They was embarrassing. But you know, the bottom line is either I could be embarrassed or I could see. And that's the problem. That's the problem. We so concerned about the fact that we're going to be embarrassed how we look because of what we don't know and what our limitations are. We rather walk around here nearsighted. Well, I can't see. And you see, they were talking about this the other day. Nearsighted and farsighted. And it's funny because it's the opposite. Farsighted means you can't see stuff up close. Nearsighted means I can't see far away. And then if you can't see far away, and some of you suffer from night blindness. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That calls for a sip of tea. You suffer from night blindness. Well, and when you get night, exactly, progressive, you need progressive. You know, you need progressive. You suffer from night blindness. When, the, when it get darker outside, you can't see. You can't see how to drive at night. So you get specialized glasses. You need what you need. And what are you saying, Pastor? If as a leader, even talking to you, I don't care if you're just leading the flower club. I don't care if you're in charge of the envelopes in the church. I don't care if you don't have a title in the church. You're leading wherever you go. Whether it's on your job, because here's the thing, render unto Caesar was due Caesar. And what we represent, we should represent the kingdom of God wherever we go. So therefore, if you realize that I can't see correctly, amen, uh, get some people and surround yourself with people that can help you. Now, in Matthew 15 and 14, right, it says that the blind... The blind leading the blind. It's talking about the blind leading the blind. Y'all familiar with that? The blind leading the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they're going to end up in a ditch. That made it very simple, right? The blind, if the blind lead the blind, they're going to end up in a ditch. 
That's what's going to happen to them. They're going to end up in the ditch. Now, I remember years ago, years ago, Noel Jones preached man. This is like 20-something years ago. Amen. He preached the message, and he used that scripture. And what he said was, and, and, and I want to touch on it because, again, even for you, even for you, and, and this might be a little tight for some people, you know, he said, if the blind is leading the blind, the blind is leading the blind, and they end up in a ditch. It's that blind person's fault. But guess who's much at fault as well? Is the individual following the blind person, right? The person following the blind person. Uh, you say, well, how is their fault? I didn't know they were blind. Yes, you did. If the blind is leading the blind, right, they're going to end up in the ditch. Because if you're a blind person, right, you're familiar with the attributes and the behavior and the movement of a blind person, right? If you see that this person that's leading you <laughs> keep tripping up, falling over, falling into holes, and this is happening, up, and you continue to follow them, that's really on you. They're doing what they could do. And again, if they don't make the proper adjustment, then listen, listen, as leaders, as leaders, we're going to trip up. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to point the wrong people. We're going to think we see something that we didn't see. We're not God. We're not going to make the, all the correct. That is why, you know, you need help. You need assistance in this. And, and again, we talk about blind spots. And one of the main blind spots, and I'm going to kind of deal with it a little bit, uh, is pride. And we talked about the pride of a blind spot. But we also have to talk about the fact that, you know, we talked about this last week about insecurity. We talked about insecurity last week, right? We talk about when a person's insecure by nature, right? They, they tend, they think, of, they think of only themselves. But the very essence of leadership is about other people. It's about other people. And sometimes this is one of the most difficult ones, but it bleeds out into the congregation. When you're insecure, you start making decisions based on your insecurity. It's a blind spot. You know, and it's even if even it's difficult to overcome because it can be so deeply embedded in you, right? You don't let other people first thing you do when, when you're insecure. When people are insecure, it's difficult. It's difficult for them to get credit to other people. And and I've seen people <laughs> give credit to other people in a sarcastic way. Horrible. That's horrible. It is it's like it's like, oh yeah, by the way. <laughs> You, when you're securing your spot, I want the most gifted people. I want the most talented people because it enhances what God has given me. The God did not give me everything within me because it's not a one man or one woman show. It's not a one person. And I'm going to say this, especially amongst uh, 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 brown and black communities when it comes to ministry. And I, I can't really speak for other communities. And I'm, uh, now it's in every community because we're human, Right. We have a tendency, and this is what, you, you, it's been kind of what it is. You know, we have a pastor, right? And we have one pastor in the church, right? And people are like, well, how do you have more than one pastor? You may have people that's shepherding over certain parts, but sometimes we won't do that. And we even do that sometimes with, with titles. We withhold titles and things like that because we're afraid of what the people, listen, you come in, you got to give. They'll tell you, one of the first things I ask you when you come and you want to be a part of the ministry, what do you do for a living? What is that you do well? Amen. Especially if we're praying a prayer and we say, Lord, send help. Let me tell you how quick. I think Sister uh, uh, Karen is on here. Uh, not Sister Karen. I forgot her name right now. Um, we prayed a prayer. I had a thought. I just simply had a thought. I said, okay, I'm noticing that Brother Will and Brother uh, General are being tied up doing things because we're limited as we're making our way back into the church. I said, I need them in other areas. Now, what they're doing, they're doing very well. Whatever acts of these brothers, they're going to figure out they're going to do it. But I need them doing things that are more important, that they have the skill set to handle that others may not have to handle. So I prayed a prayer. I said, you know what, Lord, what can I do? The Lord laid in my heart, go, you know, get a young person that's perhaps in school, that's trying to learn how to do video and things like that, bring them in and train them. So I told Brother Will, Brother Will told the praise and worship team, I get a call. We got someone. Within a week, within a week, within a week, the young man turned out to be the young man, my Jarrell. He's, he's at Passaic County Tech. Brother has come in, and not only he's come in, he's been faithful. He's been diligent. He's been embracing what he's doing. Not only that, his family has come and joined the church. That's how God works. I knew what we needed. Now, we can multitask and do all of those things, and that's all well and good. But God said, you know what you're doing? You're blessing someone else. You know, and I told, and I'm gonna tell you what I told him. I know his mom is still on here. I told him, I said, if you do this, continue to do this for God, and you lean into God, and you do it for the right reason. I said, by the time you're 30 years old, you could be a millionaire. 
And I meant that from the depths of my soul because that's what I saw in, on him. And that's why we do what we do. You can't be insecure. I do video, but I'm not doing video. I don't have to do video. <clears throat> we prayed. We asked the Lord to send help. And when the Lord sent help, you can't be insecure. And so I'm not just talking about <laughs> the pastor, right? If you've been ushering for 15 years, it's come on. Can I tell you this? If you ever decide to become a part of whole life community church and you start working that whole life and you become in a leadership position, your first assignment is this. This is your first assignment on your first day doing what you do is to find your replacement. That's the first thing you do. You find your replacement. You should be working towards finding your replacement. That means that I'm seeking to grow and develop someone else. Amen. That is there you go, Sister Martin. There you go. Exactly. And that and that exactly what happened. You're looking to find your replacement. And I see sometimes, you know, especially the men. It ain't just the men, it's all of us. It's all of us, right? We don't want to let go because that's security. That's security. That's security. It gives you a sense of worth. It makes you feel like something, right? And I get it. It's cool, but it ain't about you. It's about the kingdom. How do we grow the kingdom? I don't listen. If if, if if as things grow and do what it needs to do, um, there's a goal. I don't need. I don't need to have. I don't need to have in this area. I don't need to have 500 members. I don't. Not in one location. If we get to a certain number, I'm gonna say, Lord, what's next? If I do this with this, I look at. It. If I look at, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. I'm gonna give you a perfect example, and I don't even know why they did it, but I'm thinking this is why they did it. Right? This is just me. Uh, Christ Church in Montclair, right? Christ Church in Montclair, Pastor David Ireland, wonderful man, him and his wife, beautiful people, right? They had a church in Montclair, grew this church from nothing. I mean, awesome ministry. I think they was having five services. Now I'm going to say was, they was having five services and he decided I need to expand. And he decided to go to Rockaway. And what happened is a campus, got two lakes on each end with ponds, you could go fishing, um, all of this, right? And they had a big challenge of getting there. And he tells the whole story. And it's powerful, powerful story, right? They were up there. I think they holding about up to 2,000. I know he was looking for a certain number and the town said no. So he finally got up there. He still was having like at least four services in Montclair. Still having four services. He did because that's what God does. And now, if y'all don't know, he's moving to Clifton. He's coming to Clifton. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind. Because, okay, we looked at our roster of people and where they're traveling from. And we found that we had a large enough community in this area where if we establish, this is what, this is how you church plan. You don't just open a church where you want to open a church. You open a church where there's a need. That's what Paul was doing. That's what missionaries were doing. The missionaries would go out and see what it was in need. Amen. That's what missionaries, the missionaries don't go just when people get sick. I hope y'all know that. <laughs> Taking food when somebody have a baby. That's not what mission, missionaries went out and they found places where, where it was a need. So it made it convenient, not convenient. You know, it made it, come, it made it where there's no excuse. They made no excuse. Now, there was one church that used to say the distance is worth the difference. And we know we get people that travel from us. We honestly... Now, people that travel from far, and it's greatly appreciated. But if we start to notice, I say, we have a lot of people in this particular area. I'm asking the Lord, what do you want me to do next? It's not about me. It's about what God wants. Again, you got to be able to get credit to other people. You can't hoard information. You can't hold on to stuff. If you got information that could be a blessing, let me go back for one second. They're trying to rush me. If you got information that could be a blessing to someone else, I, I give away everything, and and. and <laughs> And I'm going to post something today, right? I'm going to post something today. It, 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 when, when, it, when you withhold information, God can't pour into you anymore. I release, when God gives me something, I release it. I share it. I share it. And I don't mind sharing. And what you also do when, when, when you're insecure, you limit your followers' exposures to other leaders. If you're that insecure, you know some old churches, some old churches, and I understood, uh, Deacon Gale, I understood because we felt like some people pre preaching some wrong and teaching some wrong doctrine. And I get that. But that kind of went a little deeper than that, where they did not want you hearing anybody else preach. Amen. But what happened? The pandemic hit and your members are hearing everybody. They're hearing everybody. And, they, and what's happening? Y'all won't say it. You won't say it while I'm in the room. You're like, well, well I got exposed to stuff I didn't even know exist before. Oh, I didn't know that. I got a revelation. I got a better understanding. And it's okay because Pastor Odo don't have it all. God has given me a certain grace. There's a certain grace that God has given me for teaching and for healing and deliverance. I have a deliverance ministry. That, that is what I recognize. And I said, well, you can't, I can't have a deliverance ministry 
when I don't hoop and I don't, you know, go in like that. I don't do that. But teaching is healing. It's deliverance. If I now recognize and can understand through the word in a plain way, in a simple way, what is really taking place? We want to, we want to, we want to, we want to microwave everything. Some of this stuff, emotional, healthy spirituality, take your time. Take your time, because as I journey through this wall and I discover things about me, like, oh, God, that's what's really going on right there. I got to step back. I got to reconsider. I got to go to the Lord. I got to ask the Lord to, to really show me some things about myself. Amen? So as we grow, again, and the other, the other two things, and I'm going to come back and finish on Thursday, right? We can't, be feel, we can't feel threatened by other people's growth. When you see people growing, that is the goal. Is it for other people to grow, to watch you grow? If if what I'm doing, if what I'm doing and you're not growing and you're not growing, there's a problem. There's a problem. And for growth to come, you got to you got to go through some things. And what I mean by that, get the lesson. And, and, and I'm, I got about I got a few minutes. I'm, I'm going to talk about that wall. because That wall is so important. It's so important. And, and again, if you want to join us on these Wednesday, just let us know and we'll give you the Zoom link and everything uh, because it's really important. What we discovered, Sister Foxworth, is the wall is a little bit different from trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations are tests. They test our faith, our walk, making choices, recognizing, you know, I, I you know what, I still got to work on that a little bit. I got to go to the word and trust in this and, and the word. If I go by the word, because I haven't mastered, but I'm doing what the word say, I haven't not mastered. But when you're at the wall, that's when you go through life tragedies and traumas. Right, but I'm in Christ. It's different when I'm out of Christ, but I'm in Christ. Hear what I'm saying? And I and this is not this this they start by going to the wall, but we had to go back to go forward. In other words, there's some things we had to make sure that <laughs> that we had to handle that that affected our presence time. So at the wall is when we go through uh, uh, loss of someone, right? When 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 we go through loss of a job, a loss of a home, and I'm not just talking about materialistic things, amen. Uh, but when you go through divorce, right? When you go through these things, and you say, "Okay, I came in a type of church where we don't get divorced," but you found yourself got divorced, right? I'm in the divorce, so I don't be, I don't want to have a scarlet letter, you know. And that's real, that's real. Now this is where church hurt come in because sometimes I was I was mishandled, so that becomes a wall. How do I recover from this? I told you when you hit a wall, you hit that place. In your walk with God, where, God, is this even real? God, did I make a mistake? God, I, I, I can't find the answers. God, I can't, I can't figure this out. And you don't sometimes stay at the wall for a little while. The wall could last 10 years. When you hear about his teaching and how he was at this wall this, this, for a long time, he talked about Mother Teresa, how she got stuck for years and God found you. Not saying it would last that long, but there's some things. See, at the wall, there's healing. See, see, we want one day procedure. We want to go to church, lift our hands, lay, put somebody some oil on you, and I'm delivered. No, there's a root. Now, you may feel good. You may have strength. But, man, it takes work. You got to pull them roots up. When you dig down, when you dig down, you come, you run into some things. You run into some things like, whoa. But guess what? Those things have been hurting you and hindering you for years, for years. For years. And what you're going to find at the wall and what you got to do when you lean on that wall, you're going to find the love of God. This is where you understand what the love of God is. If you don't embrace the love of God for real, I'm not just someone we talk about it and we think the love of God. We think the love of God, and this, and this is what we say. And this is what we say. I love you with the love of God. You need to repent for even saying that. Because that's not what, what you're doing. What you're doing, you're tolerating people because they get on your nerve. And I would tell you off and give you a piece of my mind, but I don't want to get in trouble with the pastor. That, that's what we call loving someone with the love of God. No, if you love someone with the love of God, there's no malice. There's no bitterness. And guess what? They did you wrong. They hurt you. They did something you did not like. But the love of God allows you to push through the wall. God allows these things to happen because there's some healing. Because when, when things can affect you, that means there's a root there. Oh, God. When things can affect you, that means there is a root there. And the enemy keep using that root. Now, he's smart. He's not going to let it bloom. He's not going to blow his cover. He ain't going to let Because just like if you don't get rid of, when you dig up roots in your thing and you just cut off the top of it, you didn't do anything. You ain't do anything. 
you got to dig down and get to the root of that thing. And that's what happens at the wall. At the wall, God said, my love, my love is going to uproot all of those things. It's going to replace all those disappointments, all them hurts, all that pain. And that pain is real. And some of y'all have pushed down. You have pushed that down so far. You've gotten married. You was able to push through and allow your feelings to allow you to get married. But you realize even in that marriage, there's some things that's, that's stimulating and aggiv- aggravating that, that root that's in me. It's aggravating. That's why you aggravate it. <laughs> it's aggravating that root of that pain, that trauma that's in your life. So, Father, we are grateful for your love and kindness. We're not just grateful for the, your son, Jesus Christ. We understand it's about the love of God. Get the love of God in your heart for real. The love of God is not tolerance because let's flip that. You did all we did to God. All we've done, even when you knew to do better, we didn't do better. But God kept on loving us. God keep on loving us. He's loving you right now. And we have done some stuff we should not have done. That's all he's asking you to do. Do what I do. You said, what would Jesus do? No, just, okay, I'm, what, what I don't do, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold back. No, no, no. Love people for real. And if you find yourself being messy, I mean, honestly, you know, you chattering, you having conversations you shouldn't have. Step back. When you fasting in prayer, don't be fasting in prayer for no house, no husband, no cars. Don't be fasting in prayer for that. God, show me me. Whatever this is, God, I'm at the wall. Don't be forced to be at the wall and don't leave the wall too soon because I know it get hard and we change town, we change position, we change church, but that root is still there. So Father, we are so grateful this morning for your loving kindness and your tender mercy for meeting us at the wall. God, continue to pour into us that we may be healed of all these things. God, in spite of everything we're going through, we're going to grow together. We're going to grow well. We're going to heal well. And we thank you for your word this morning, but most of all, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. It's not just a sacrifice, which is extension of your love, but you sent him here, your only begotten son. That is the love of God. You so love, you so love the world that you sent your only begotten son. And Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us. He made it not because you made him do it. It was because of the love that he had for us. He knew that that, the greater he knew that I was coming. He knew that Pastor Smith was coming and Sister Foxworth and Sister Martin. He knew that Sister McCall would be here. He knew that a Mother Cooper would be here. He knew that they would need this word today. And you sent this God so that healing can begin. And healing won't just begin. We pray, God, that you continue to come. Overshadow them. I feel an overshadowing right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, to touch our sister Griffin and her family as they go through what they're going through. Touch our sister Tracy Lassane as their family are preparing to give a home come, go home going for their mom. God, strengthen them as they have gone through these most difficult times. And even those who are still grieving and going through, those who are grieving not just death but losses, God. Losses of different things, God. I ask you, Father, to strengthen every pastor, God. Every leader, God, as we try not to have these blind spots, let us recognize the insecurities in us trying to lead, God, that we will not fumble, that we will not cause other people to stumble over our insecurities. God, help us right now. Even when people that are following us are doing things wrong, what is it about me that's not able to help them get through those situations? Why do my stuff come up? Why do it agitate something into me? Why, God? Why did I respond? Why did I react in that particular way when that happened? That is the question you ask yourself. This is not about the other person. This is not about them. It's not about them. This is about you and why you respond and react the way. That's how you get healing. Don't try to figure out their actions and their motives. Amen? God, what is it in me? God, help me right now. Help me right now that I can see them as you see me. And Father, we thank you. We praise you and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you guys again for always joining us, being a part of morning worship. God is so good. Amen. You guys bring joy to my heart. You give me strength. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity to always share with you. Again, let me bring this up. Uh, What's coming up this week? Again, we have our worship on 11 a.m. in person and in Facebook. Amen. We had who, Brother James? You missed it on Sunday. Oh, let me see if I'm. 
Got to make sure because I'll be, I'll be having my own technical difficulties. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, you missed a, a, a wonderful time in the Lord on Sunday. And God bless you came through there like a mighty Russian wind. Let me tell you, uh, the brethren was, was praising God. Oh, my God. He was doing some marvelous thing. And I thank him. I thank him. And I've seen ministry in such a, a different way. And the ministry for us, for us, Sister Jada, it goes beyond the four walls, way beyond the four walls. Every encounter, every situation that God leads me to, he's ministering to souls. I was sharing with them Saturday night. I met with some of my brothers from college that I haven't seen in years. And we basically had a deliverance service at that time. God is so, so good. Uh, again, morning manner, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 a.m. Bible study. Again, if you want to be a part of that, we welcome you. Just inbox them, any of our leaders on the page, and we will welcome you to that. Again, we continue in our series, Amen to Glory, say the same, Amen, uh, on this Sunday, Amen, about revival, uh, revival, right? We're stronger than before. We are stronger than before. And we're going to close on a song, and, you know, somehow, some way, God has made a way. So be blessed. Enjoy your day. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Lord told me to tell everybody in here today. Amen. Father, we believe in your power. We believe in your strength. And whatever we face in life, we know that, God, you can still make a way. Through danger seen and unseen, God, you can still make a way. If you believe that, just begin to lift your hands and say, God, make a way. Come on, say, make a way, make a way. Make a way, Lord. Yes, God, your will be done. Standing here. Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know best Nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out And you're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't Wrap us in your arms and step in And everything we need you supply You've got this in control And now we know that you made a way Yes, Lord When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, Lord you made a way and we are standing here only because you made can you help me say you made a way when our backs were when our backs were against and the and it looked as if it yes lord it if i had a witness can i just see you lift your hands right here and we're standing One more time, see you made a way, Lord. Yes, you did. When our backs were, and it looked as if it was over. Lift your hands and tell them you, Lord. Come on, and we're standing here only because you made a way. If you believe he's a way maker, I need to see your hands all over this building and declare that you move mountains yes sir and you cause walls to fall and with your power yes Lord we believe you perform miracles and there is nothing hey yes Lord that's impossible and we're standing here hey only because you
Say you made a move, yes, Lord. Think about your situations, your problems. See, you made a move. Come on, think about your situation this morning. Tell them you made it. Yes, Lord. Say, don't know.